Hi beautiful people and welcome once again to Prisoners of Hope. Hope you guys had a blessed Christmas spending it with your family, friends and loved ones. I know this year has been challenging for us all, um, you know, whether it be physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, we've all had our struggles and our fight to fight this year. And as this year closes, I know there's a lot of questions and uncertainties that we may have. Like what is 2022 going to look like for us, especially for us being married and, um, you know, we've got marital problems. You're wondering if you're going to be alone. Uh, you're alone right now. And, uh, you know, you're just trusting God and you're waiting for God to give you a word. And I hope that today's word can be some sort of encouragement for you because when I was asking God questions about my marriage, whether I should get divorced or not, he spoke to me about exile and not divorce and he told me to read the book of Isaiah and to meditate on it and you know as I read the book of Isaiah the first thing that popped up for me was uh, chapter 3 and verses 1 where it said then the Lord said to me go again and love a woman who is loved by a lover and is committing adultery just like the love of the Lord for the children of Israel who look to other gods and love raisin cakes. So this showed me that um, I had to accept my husband and I had to forgive him because I've also failed and we as people have also failed with God and in serving God and being unfaithful with him. And then the next verse he told me, you know, as I... I tried to obey God with this verse, but okay, if you're telling me to to save my marriage and to accept my husband, even though he's telling me he hates me and he wants a divorce, I'm going to trust you on this. And I'm going to use the word of God. It shall not come back void. And then as, you know, um, I studied the word of God, Isaiah 2 verses 6 and 7 was what the Lord told me to pray over my husband. It is the head of protection prayer. It is... The most, I think, uh, the popular prayer we pray over our marriages. I did not know about this prayer until I read this book and until I started searching for answers about my marriage. And the verse says, Therefore, behold, I will hedge up her way with thorns and wall her in so that she cannot find her path. She will chase her lovers but not overtake them. Yes, she will seek them but not find them. And then she will say, I will go and return to my first husband. For then it was better for me than it is now. Wow. So I loved this verse actually. Um, this is a powerful tool to use against the enemy who is bringing division in your marriage, who is defiling the marital bed. Because, you know, um, here we learn that you can actually put a hitch around your marriage. And this is exactly what I did. The moment I learned this is what I did. So guys, please also do the same thing. You pray and you put a hitch over your husband, over your wife, over the marriage, over the situation, over the other woman, over your mind, his mind, your heart, his heart, and over the situation. And you say, yes, he will go and you will search for his other woman and you will look for them, but he will not find them in the name of Jesus. I will wall him up so he will run around and he will not find them. They, he will not overtake his lovers, even if his lovers look for him they shall not find him and then he will come back home and return back to me his wife and then he will say it is better now with me you know than it is being with another woman that he should rather return back home to his wife and as i pray these verses I, I had faith i had to believe that god did not bring me into the book of isaiah to make me a fool and I promise you, as I prayed those verses, I believed and every day I fasted and I, I and I never gave up. I woke up putting that hedge and I went to bed putting that hedge. When I phoned him, I put that hedge. When he came to visit, I put that hedge. And you know, the lessons I learned from, from the book of Isaiah from chapter 1 to 12, I'm just going to share it with you very quickly, um, is that you know, as long as you rebel, God's judgment will remain. I was rebellious and so was my husband. And I needed to change first. I needed to go back to my God. I needed to repent and I needed to humble myself and I needed to surrender it to God and to repent from my wicked ways and ask God for mercy and grace in the situation. 
You see, I've also learned from the book of Isaiah that God is searching for people who are faithful and who are steadfast in love. People are not going to give up on him. People are not going to give up on love just because they've been hurt or bruised. Um, I've also learned that the spirit of prostitution is real and it starts in our hearts. So you have to you have to let God deal with the person's heart. So I had to pray prayers that God would soften my husband's heart towards me and that he would give me supernatural favor in the situation with my husband. I also learned that in the book of Isaiah that there can be illegitimate children. So I had to cancel every illegitimate child um, that this situation or the season could bring in because I don't want my husband doing these deeds outside of the marriage and then telling me um, you know what she's pregnant that's the last thing you want to hear so I cancelled it I put a I put a stop to it and I said there will be no illegitimate children in my marriage with Calvin in the name of Jesus um, I also you know I believe that when I read the book that God would not bless this this cheating, this affair, God would not bless them because it's stolen love, it's borrowed love, it's my love, it's my marriage, it's my life. And here comes another woman and she just wants to take it and make it her own. No, you know, whether I treated my husband right or didn't treat my husband right, that was not another woman's job to come and just make changes in my life. And therefore, when I, when I took this to the Lord and I said, you know, she hurt me with her words to say that I could not take care of my man, so therefore she was going to. The Lord spoke to me about women like this. He said that his wrath will be upon them like a flood of water. And that's what I said. My Lord, let your wrath be upon them like a flood of water, so they may know right from wrong, that they may know that God will never bless this relationship that they have, that it's not right. It's not God's will. And... um. I pray that they would seek God's face earnestly in their misery, that they will feel guilty and um, that the Holy Spirit and the angels would go and they would have an encounter with God. You know, I also realized that even though I was going through so much of anguish, um, I know that God's judgment right now was just temporary that the season was just temporary. So for you guys as well, the season is just temporary. It's not going to last forever. It's not permanent. Um, you need to pray for your spouse to repent. You need to pray against his rebellious heart, for it to be softened again, so that he would turn to God, that he would know God, that he would acknowledge God, that he would have a fear of God. Because if a person truly loved God and honored God and was a man of God or the woman of God, they would never cheat on you. They would never do that because the first thing they would think about was the relationship with God and what would happen to that relationship. So um, I've also learned that in Isaiah we have to exercise our faith. Without faith we could not win this battle. We have to pray for faith to endure, to endure through the hardships, through the oppression, through the persecution of what people may say or do to us. Um, and we, I also learned that they will stumble in their guilt, that they will not flourish, that God would not allow them to be successful and prosperous. So no weapon formed against me in my marriage shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Isaiah teaches us that God is waiting to redeem us. You know, we are his lost love and our spouse are also lost and God is just waiting to redeem that lost love and we need to pray them to return back to God because God is calling them and you know God is a God of justice I read it everywhere in the Bible God is the God of justice and he will give you supernatural favor with your husband in your marriage even with your enemies but that doesn't happen without obeying God's word without surrender without submission without spending time with God and, and having a relationship with him so, um, guys, I hope that with everything that you are going through, that you will hold fast to the promise of God. Prisoners of Hope comes from Zechariah 9 verses 12. It says, return to you, stronghold. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today, I will declare to you that I will render double for your trouble. 
And I believe that if so long as we hope and believe and stand firm in our faith with God, that nothing is impossible. Even the situation, it's not impossible for God to change, to do something new with. You know, Hosea 14 closes with God promising them after judgment. He's promising them that he will heal their weight witness. So I asked God to heal my husband's weight witness. And he said that he would love them fully and that he would take his anger away from them. And that we will once again be under his shade and flourish like grain. So I believe that that is the promise of God. You need to hold on to what the word of God says over your marriage. And even though it may be lonely right now and things may not be going your way right now, prayer is a powerful tool that we have and you need to just believe and never give up in what the word of God says for your marriage I know I've done it and God is no respecter of persons what he's done for me he can surely do for you I believe that you too will have your testimony and I cannot wait to hear what the Lord has done for you I believe 2022 is going to be a great year and I believe that God will use your pain for a greater purpose. Guys, be blessed, stay safe, and never give up on believing what God has spoken over your life. Happy New Year's and all the best. I see you next year, guys. Bye.